I'm Lynn Flukey, and this is my handler, Morgan, and our demonstration horse, Marco. Today I'm going to talk about the horse health check. It's important to know what is normal for your horse and his average and regular vital signs and behaviors. When you approach the horse, you want to take into account what their behaviors are and how they look. You want to do an overall check of their appearance. So when you go up to your horse, you want to look at his facial expression and see if he looks dull. Is he interested in you showing up in hopes of you feeding him? Is he standing in the back of his stall with his head down, ignoring everything? Is he pawing? Does he have any visual problems such as major scrapes or cuts that were not there before? All these things are important to look for to see if there is a potential problem with your horse's health. Does he have a healthy shiny coat or is it all dull and does he look mangy or something? So it's important to look at your horse and know his normal. So it's good to do an, a general hands-on examination to check for those cuts and scrapes or sore spots. So. You put your hands on them, make sure you check for swelling, any sort of abnormality that you weren't aware of before. I have my handler, Morgan, uh, moving to the other side with me. You always want your handler to be on the same side as you so that if there's a safety problem, she can pull Marco's head towards us and send his hind end away. After doing your visual and hands-on assessment of the horse, you can then move on to checking vital signs. So our first thing to check is going to be our mucous membranes. The mucous membranes should be pink and moist, and the places you're going to check those are under his lip, on his gums, and the conjunctiva of his eye. I'm not actually going to show you the conjunctiva of his eye since it's kind of disruptive to the eye and its system to mess with it a lot, but to check it, you would stand to the side, you would lift the upper lid with your pointer finger and pull the lower lid down with your thumb and the conjunctiva is just kind of that lining of the eyelid and you want it to be pink and moist. With the gums, you lift the lip and examine. You want them to be pink and moist and abnormalities with the gums or the conjunctiva of the eye would be like a bright red. That could be fever or infection. Blue could mean lack of oxygen. Yellow could be anemia or a problem with the liver. White could mean shock. And so you want to pay attention to the color and the moisture level, as dry could mean dehydration. So I'm going to examine the mucous membranes, checking, lifting his lip, and feeling, and it's indeed slimy, and they're a nice, healthy pink color. Good boy. Then when you're doing that check, at the same time or after, you could check your capillary refill. The capillary refill checks for dehydration, or hydration, which would be favorable. <laughs> to do this test, you lift the lip, you're going to press your finger onto the gums, and then remove your finger. What you're looking for is, while your finger is pressed to the gums, the color kind of leaves the area and the gum turns white. When you remove your finger, the color should return to that area. You want it to return to that spot in less than two seconds. Any longer than that could mean dehydration. So I'm going to now check capillary refill. I'm going to lift Marco's lip. I'm going to press my thumb to the gums firmly, remove it, and the color came back almost immediately, so that's very good. The next check for hydration is the skin pinch test. To check the skin pinch, you're actually going to pinch the horse's skin in front of the shoulder on the neck. You're going to grab the skin, pinch, and then release, 
and you want the skin to flatten out in less than two seconds. It might take longer if your horse is older and has looser skin, so it's important to do this test regularly so you know what's normal for them. If the skin were to remain tented or in that pinched formation for longer than two seconds, that could mean dehydration. So I'm going to have my handler move him a little. There you go. And I'm going to let him know I'm here. And I'm going to grab the skin, pinch, and let go. And it flattened out fairly quickly. He's a little older. But again, pinch and release, and it flattens. So any longer than that, and I might be a little concerned about his hydration. The next vital sign I'm going to check on Marco is his pulse. There are multiple places to take the pulse. And the first one is the maxillary artery. That means it's right under the cheek here, in the jaw. So when taking the pulse, you want to have a timer and they'll time you for 15 seconds. And when it, I'm being timed, I'm going to feel the pulse and count the number of beats until my timer tells me that 15 seconds are up. Then I'm going to take that number and multiply it by four so we know how many beats there are in a minute. The normal range for a pulse for a horse is 32 to 44 beats per minute. So you hope that your number is in that range. Higher could mean pain, lower could mean some sort of illness or even shock. I'm going to find the pulse and then I'm going to tell Ashley, she's going to start timing and I'll start counting. I felt nine beats of the heart, so that's going to be multiplied by four and end up at 36. That falls within the normal range for the pulse. I'm now going to check it on the next spot, which is the radial artery. This is on um, back inside of the knee. Oh, put your foot down. Good boy. I'm going to run my hand down his leg. Find the appropriate spot at the back of the knee. To the slightly to the inside. And I found it, so you can begin timing, Ashley. Start. Stop. Again, I felt nine beats, so that ends up being 36 beats per minute. The next place to check would be the digital pulse. That's not the place you commonly check for the horse's pulse, simply because it's usually really hard to feel, if not impossible. You would typically feel that if there's a problem in the foot or the lower leg, such as bounder or laminitis, or if there was an abscess. But we're going to try to find it today and show you how. Again, you run your hands down the leg. You wait for your horse to put his foot back down. You find right at the base to the inside of the fetlock joint, you're going to have two fingers there and a finger on the other side of the fetlock joint as well. And you kind of have to wait because it's going to be a little hard to find. And I don't feel anything, so I'm going to check in the next little spot. You can also slide your fingers down to the back of the pastern bone and feel in there as well. And again, I did not feel anything, and that's okay because that. Marco is healthy, we don't suspect any problems in the feet, so it's all right to not feel anything.
Next, I'm going to check Marco's heart rate. And you expect the heart rate and the pulse to be the same, since the pulse is a reflection of the heart rate. Um, so the only reason I would suspect it would be different would be if something distracted him in the time in between taking them, and that could have caused him some more excitement and raised his heart rate. But I anticipate it being the same. So to check the heart rate, you are going to have a stethoscope, and you're going to check right here on the left side behind the horse's elbow against his heart girth. So you put your stethoscope in your ears and then place the stethoscope to the heart girth and once you hear the pulse you can have your timer go ahead and start timing again for 15 seconds and then you'll multiply the number you get by four. So I'm going to put my stethoscope on. Okay, I have it. Start. Stop. So I did get the number nine for beats in 15 seconds. So you multiply that by four and you get 36 beats per minute. This falls in the normal range of 32 to 44 beats per minute and was the same as the pulse. I'm now going to check the next vital sign, which is the respiration rate. The normal respiration range for a horse is eight to 16 breaths per minute. So when you check the respiration rate, you want to watch the flank area and it kind of moves out and in with each breath. Sometimes it has a little quiver in the middle. So you want to observe the horse for a second before you count, begin to count the respirations so that you know what one breath actually is. You don't want to count out and in each individually. That's one. And then the next out and in would be two. So you want to observe how the horse breathes and how he moves. And then you want to have a timer. I like to time for 30 seconds, which is longer than the rest than the heart rate and the pulse, simply because it's a lower number you're going to be getting. So if the horse's respiration rate was very low, you'd only count one or two breaths in 15 seconds. So I like 30 seconds, and then you multiply that number by two to get the number of breaths per minute. Some people say that you can check the respiration rate by looking at the horse's nostrils. However, this can easily become inaccurate as the horse uses his nostrils when he's interested in things and they can flare at unexpected times and it's hard to get an accurate count. So I'm going to put my hand on Marco and I'm going to stand close so I can watch his flank area. I'm going to watch it for a second and I'm ready for my timer to begin timing whenever. Start. Time. I counted six breaths in that time, so I'm going to multiply that number by two and get 12 breaths per minute. This falls within the normal range of eight to 16 breaths per minute, which is good because if the number is higher, it could show as a symptom of pain or distress of some sort, and too low of a number could just mean the horse is relaxed and very, very calm, but it could also indicate a problem. So the next vital sign I'm going to check is the temperature of the horse. So I'm going to grab my thermometer. So for taking the horse's temperature, you need 
a thermometer, and you can use a mercury thermometer or a digital thermometer. Digital is a little easier because it's easier to read and you don't have to take the temperature for as long, but mercury can often be a little more accurate. For a mercury thermometer, you want to make sure to shake the thermometer down to below 98 degrees before taking the temperature. For a digital thermometer, you just want to make sure that the batteries work and it might be a little off, so if for some reason you think the temperature is very inaccurate, you might want to just replace the batteries and try again or try a different thermometer. The normal average range for a horse's temperature is 99.5 degrees to 101.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So to take the horse's temperature, you take it rectally. So you're going to move the horse's tail to the side and slip the thermometer into the rectum and angle it toward the wall of the rectum. So you're going to make sure to hold on to the thermometer. If you're using a mercury thermometer, you need to have a tail clip and a string. So the string attaches to the thermometer, the clip's at the end, and you clip that to the tail because the horse can actually suck things into his rectum and that would be very bad. So you want to make sure that you have lubricant of some form for your thermometer. You could use something like KY jelly or petroleum jelly, which is also Vaseline. So you're going to stick your thermometer in there. You want to make sure you get that you're using um, Vaseline that's just for thermometer lubrication. Once it's all gooped up nicely, you can set that to the side. And then you want to make sure your horse knows what's coming because he could get a little nervous or uncomfortable with the situation. So you want to pet him and talk to him. You turn your thermometer on. If it's digital, you wait for it to clear out or say whatever it says before it's ready. You gently lift the tail to the side, out of the way, and slip the thermometer into the rectum, angle it toward the side, and you wait for it to beep. You want to keep your hands on your horse so that if you were to move or suddenly decide he's unhappy and want to kick, you're prepared. You can kind of move with him if he moves. All right, and now that it's seeped, I'm going to gently pull it out and read it. And it says 100.3, so that falls in the normal range. Now I'm going to turn it off, and then I would get a rag to wipe it, clean it off. And then if you, a good thing to do is to clean it with rubbing alcohol or some sort of disinfectant before you were to use it on another horse. Another important thing to check on your horse is his gut sounds. You want to know what's normal for him, so you should listen to these frequently. You want to hear healthy, normal, rumbling, um, different noises in there. You want to hear activity. It's going to vary depending on when he's eaten, though. They might be more active right after or before mealtime. So you want to know what's normal for him. There are so many different sounds you can hear in the gut. You want to listen for any sounds that could indicate a problem. These could be hypermotility, which is that rushing water sound. Could mean the gut is trying too hard and is a little overactive. Um, pinging um, sounds like marbles being dropped down staircases or pins on rubber like a balloon. Those are some noises you want to listen for if you suspect a problem. So when you check for gut sounds, you want to give yourself enough time to listen and actually hear, and you want to check the four quadrants of the horse's gut. So you're going to check the upper, 
and lower quadrant on both sides of the horse, so that's four. So when you check, if you're in a louder environment, you could use a stethoscope and actually put the stethoscope where you want to listen. That can give you a good direct sound in there. Um, but I prefer, if the environment allows for it, to actually put your ear onto the horse's side and listen. When you're doing that, you want to have your hands on the horse so you can feel if he's going to move or become agitated. You also want to be facing the horse's hind end so you can watch the hind legs and make sure you're safe if he thinks he wants to kick or something. I have my handler to watch the front end so that he doesn't bite me in the back, but I'm watching the hind end as well. So I'm going to check the upper quadrant on this side first. I'm going to have my hands on him and put my ear and listen. I want my feet to be out of the way from his feet if he were to move. I heard the normal rumbling. I also heard a little bit of a marble sound, but that's kind of normal for Marco, so it's okay. But it is something to be aware of and possibly record in your notes about your horse. Now I'm going to check the lower quadrant on this side. heard rumblings, they were a bit quieter than the upper quadrant. And that's something to also note because you do want to hear sounds. No sounds could indicate a problem such as part of the bowel not working. So that is something to note. I'm going to check the upper quadrant on this side now. I heard a lot of rumbling in that quadrant. It's very active at the moment. Now I'm going to check the lower quadrant on this side. Again, that quadrant was very active with rumbles and some almost gassy sounds. So his gut sounds were normal for him, 